I am joined by Rachel, president of International Well Building Institute, coming to us from New York City. How are you? Pretty good in COVID-adjusted terms. My standard <laughs> response these days. Yes. Uh, well, I think it's fair to say you are a green building champion. Having received, let me go down this list. I don't, I don't have time for this. This podcast is too short. Received the 2012 World Green Building Council's Chairman's Award. Honored by Martha Stewart's Whole Living Magazine as an eco-heroine in 2011. You also spent a decade uh, as Senior VP of Knowledge at the U.S. Green Building Council. Contributing to publications and media, New York Times, Fox, CNN, NPR. And I'm going to stop there. <laughs> it's getting embarrassed. But, but very good. Uh, so let's start with this. Um, as a company that focuses on wellness, uh, what was it like when the pandemic hit? Well, uh, it was like everything stopped for a moment in time. Um, we, I think, realized far before the pandemic hit in the U.S. Um, that we had a lot to offer to our community and beyond. So our largest market by square footage in terms of registered well projects is in China. And we have a 20 person team there. And they were essentially on lockdown for the better part of two months before we were. They started collecting all of the different research and resources that we had within the well building standard and um, curating that into a kind of COVID-19 master strategies list. And they were getting as many as 110,000 participants on their webcasts. So we knew that there was this huge hunger to really get to the science behind the ways that our buildings can either enhance or take away from um, our, our sense of preparedness and our ability to keep those inside of those buildings healthy and safe. And so when the pandemic um, began uh, and we announced to our staff in New York that we were moving to a remote work situation, we basically halted our entire work plan and revised it in light of the pandemic. So tell us real quick, uh, what exactly is the International Well Building Institute? The IWBI um, is a purpose-driven public benefit corporation, and we are on a mission to transform um, the places and spaces where we spend our lives uh, into places and spaces where people can thrive. So we're best known for offering a certification called WELL, and that certification is available for individual buildings at an organization scale through our portfolio program and to communities for thinking about the spaces and places in between the structures. So what does that mean exactly? So we are looking at all of the different ways in which the built environment or the, the, the space around us can have an impact on our health and well-being. Um, and for us, that cuts across that which the building can do through design and through operations and through maintenance, and that which the organization can do through programs, policies, plans, and protocols. So IWBI and the WELL standard, we organize ourselves by 10 concepts. These are basically the categories in which you earn points towards certification. So that includes air, water, materials, light, thermal comfort, nourishment, mental health and well-being, community connectivity, uh, sound and materials health. I don't, so it, it's broad, right? Um, and yeah. so in terms of COVID, that, you know, a lot of the focus is on what can we change about our environments that will tend to the most urgent and pressing needs for health and safety. That's basic stuff like air quality or flushing out our water systems to maintain water quality. But a lot of the long-term strategies that are most important in a moment like this have to do with interventions to address immunity. So things like nourishment and physical movement. All of these things come together to form a picture of your health. And what we know is that your physical environment and your social environment has a greater bearing on your state of health than your access to healthcare, your genetics, and even your lifestyle and behaviors. It's where you sit and who you sit next to. Wow. Well, I'm alone in here, so I'm feeling good. <laughs> yeah, this is your best chance. Yeah. So, um, hoteliers. Yeah. So what can the hospitality industry do to restore the public's confidence and feeling safe in these environments? Their hotels. 
you know, I've spoken to a lot of hotel owners and operators since the outset of the pandemic and the place where they've come to us for help is addressing the confidence gap. The gap that exists between that which the hotel is doing and what the person who's considering walking into that hotel or spending a night in that hotel perceives that the hotel is doing. Um, and so what I've come to understand is that hotels have been and hospitality in general was one of the sectors that knew from the very outset of the pandemic that they had to take this incredibly seriously, that the expectations of guests would shift. Um, but what they're struggling with in many instances is how do I communicate that in the shorthand, which is why um, hospitality was one of the sectors that we had in mind when we created during the pandemic the well health safety rating. That is a seal that's very specifically designed to, to speak to this moment where a seal on the outside signifies that you can feel more confident coming inside. So these hoteliers can obtain this seal? Yes, many of them are, are working on it as we speak. Very good. So where can uh, hoteliers in, in my audience uh, learn more? Like, can they go to a website? Where would that be? They sure can. It's always on a website these days, right? Because uh, you can't find it in person by and large. So it's wellcertified.com. Um, and from there, you can find out more information about the well health safety rating, but also well certification writ large. Right now, we're seeing um, stronger and stronger participation um, by, uh, by hospitality. Uh, we've got uh, certified projects ranging from Hyatt's HQ in Chicago, where they were test driving the certification, to a small inn uh, in California called the Inn at Moonlight Beach. Um, that have completed full-on well certifications, that act of going deeper. Um, we see a lot of, of hotels dipping their, their uh, toes in, if you will, by earning the well health safety seal, which is a smaller subset of interventions, like I said, that's really focused on urgent health and safety needs and, and how buildings or, or spaces can help in the fight against COVID-19. Very good. All right. With the minute remaining, Rachel. Any advice for hoteliers out there as they continue to go through this big mess? Well, this is a big mess. My heart goes out to hotel owners and operators and the staff. I think that this is a sector that's been um, as hard hit as any in the midst of this pandemic. And so I would say a couple of things. Number one, knowledge is power. I'm amazed at how many bunk solutions are being proffered up to the market right now. Um, and surprised at how many um, organizations are taking them up on their offers. So you've got to lead with the science. You've got to lead with the research. You can also find that for free on our website. The second piece of advice that I would say is think about what that shorthand is for communicating to your guests. Things like the well health safety rating um, in a single symbol signify the whole host of, of, of actions that you've probably already taken to reopen or to prepare to reopen. Um, and then finally, um, you know, I think um, there are longer term implications for hospitality that can be really positive. And the hotels that embrace these things as new ways of operating and new ways of being, as opposed to interim measures that we have to take for COVID-19 are going to be the winners. And by that, I don't mean the ones that forever enforce physical distancing and wearing masks. What I mean is that the new version of what health and well-being means in hospitality isn't about having, you know, great gyms and healthy food menus and, you know, workout equipment in your room and that terrible um, trend we saw for a little while of being able to rent your sneakers and your workout gear. Like, those things are, okay, some of them um, are, are important, but, but really what health and, and, and wellness and well-being mean to the hotel guest right now is keeping my family safe, protecting my life, making sure that I have, I can um, breathe fresh air, drink clean water, um, and, and, and expect that the hotel is following all of the latest and greatest science that's going to keep me from, from getting the virus. But, you know, a year from now, keep me from getting the seasonal flu too. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, Rachel. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And the whole industry. 